Hello and welcome to this Accomplished Beginners Blender tutorial number 20. In this tutorial we will use a particle system to add something that looks like hair onto a mesh object. I'll start out by sub subdividing this cube and I'll use Alt right mouse click to select these loops and I'll do that around, I'll want to be in edge mode right now and I'll just scale it so I can move these edges out. So Alt right mouse click, Shift Alt right mouse click scale Y and then same thing here and scale it in X S X like this then I want to go over to face mode and select all of it so to have a particle system you need for you need to have a mesh object that is the emitter of the particles because the faces or vertices or the volume of the mesh object emits the particles. Also, to render the particles or the strands of hair, you want to have a material. And I'll start by creating one that's called black hair. Black hair. So I'll just make that black with a bluish tinted specularity like this change it to blend next thing I will create something I called red hair and I'll just uh, make that a red look change that to blend too so that's it. These are not very realistic hair colors, perhaps, but they serve this purpose. I'll also add a light skin because that's easier to contrast against these uh, hair colors. So I'll just uh, make it not as hard, a little bit softer, like this. So very simple. And I'll call that skin. and I'll assign that to this cube. The next thing to do is to add the actual uh, particle system and you click on the next rightmost icon here and you get this empty space with the plus and minus button and you press the plus button and you get uh, a default particle system which is by default emitter but we want hair so if I press that you instantly get the hair so that that's how that looks so these are completely straight strands and we'll only work with straight strands for this particular tutorial because this has to do with how the hair is placed on the object not how the hair itself is, is shaped and I suggest you use the advanced feature you can change the hair length in the mount here but you can if you click the advanced you can still change the amount and you change the hair length by using the normal uh, so I'll just um, call do that 0 0.25 or maybe less than that even 0 0.03 okay now we have little stubs of hair and that's a little bit more manageable And the next thing I want to discuss is how the hairs are placed on the object. And you have two basic modes, random and jittered. And random is a little bit easier when you have large swaths and that you're not that concerned with the exact edges of your... If you want the entire thing to be a hairball, then maybe, uh, you know, random is the way to go. If you want more control, you probably want to use jittered but then you're facing the problem of uh, your, the size of the, uh, of the faces controlling more precisely where the strands end up. So if you have jittered and you use this particle fa particles per face and uh, click that to one, you'll get exactly one per face. So that's pretty cute. You can get it perfectly controlled, but of course that doesn't look very hair-like. 
there could be applications where you want to be able to control this very precisely. So we'll, we'll just stick to the automatic calculation anyway. And um, let's say we want to increase the amount to get thicker here, 10,000. You still kind of get this edged look here. So it might not work as well for you as you would like it to. Then there's a different way, and, and you will most likely work with so-called children to uh, control this. You can have, you can fill in by having children to these. These are the parents, these strands are the parents, and then you can add children. But for now, we'll just uh, stay away from that uh, and look instead on how we can control uh, where the hair ends up. And that's done through using vertex uh, groups. So what I'll do here is this. Um, I'll deselect everything and preemptively I will add a couple of loops here, there, there, or four loops actually, there, and control R. So now we have extra edges on our top here. I'll press 7 to look at it from the top. And um, choose face mode. Take the lasso and just lasso in the top here. And uh, then I'll do Alt, Shift, and right mouse select so I can remove these outer ones. And you probably see where I'm going with this. So anyway, I'll go to the vertex group, add, and I call it scalp, and assign that, and deselect, and select. So now, okay, now we know we do have this vertex group that covers this area minus the very edge. Let's go back to particle systems because here you have vertex groups that can control where they end up and that's the density vertex group so I'll say scalp go back to object mode and uh, we didn't get that action right away uh, I think it's because we could sometimes you need to release the the bake so what you can do then if you get if it happens like that you don't get the change that you wanted you can go into here go to emitter and um, the cache tab and free all bakes so now we'll go back here and um, and then change back to hair and look so if if it kind of gets stuck like that and doesn't follow you, uh, follow what you're doing, your changes, then you might want to, uh, you know, go and release, release the bake by going into emitter mode. So that's kind of an, a cumbersome thing. You go into emitter mode, the hairs disappear. You go in and free all the bakes, and then you go back to hair, and then there you're back to your actual action here. We can try to render that, and yeah, that's what it is. So there, so you realize that uh, there's a lot of tricks of this, you know, tricks to this trade, uh, a lot of things to keep track of. Uh, so now we have this jittered, and you can see how this is kind of very sparsely populated in the emitter, but we're controlling the edges beautifully. Let's choose random, and that actually worked pretty good too. Uh, it, but it wants to kind of get over. You have some extras here, some little strands that are out on the edge where they really don't belong, so to speak. So it's, it's a matter of tolerance. Uh, you get it more evenly distributed. Uh, however, uh, if you prepare for this in advance and you make your mesh more evenly, you know, more even, and usually when you make something like a head or something, you want to have a pretty... A reasonably even mesh so you don't have large you know singular uh, 
rectangular faces like that, or this is a square face, but um, so it usually shouldn't be a problem, but that's something to know about that your large faces will have kind of a sparser population. So I'm almost, almost done here because we talked about how to control where the hairs end up, their length, and the amount of them. And we'll just look at that again, the, the children. If you add the children, uh, we go in here, you get a much denser mesh. And you can see how that goes. Uh, and uh, here we have the random, so we go for the jittered, and then you see how that goes. How it's clumped together like that. Change to jittering, that will also change things. If we do in interpolated children, it's much better contained. doesn't matter really which one you choose there so it's it takes more takes more power to run the interpolated children but you can see you have much better control so these are some of the basic uh, scenarios to get into uh, and we'll just render this real quick and uh, we'll change materials also you can see it looks very very dense here and of course it's because the light is in the wrong spot we're not getting illumination sufficiently, I think. I'll add some more illumination, put that over here, and add the shift A, add a hemi spherical light, uh, just to kind of get a more even illumination. And I just lower the energy there to like 360. That's good. And we'll try this. We'll also try the other material, um, but this here gives very little specularity. You can't hardly see anything. So we can go back to the particle system and we can um, change the amount of children that are rendered down to 10 instead. We can see what that goes. Three, yeah, maybe we do five. And then the render process is much, much faster. Go back to 3D view and change the material to two. Then you get red hair. So there are the basic uh, kind of basic features, how you can control where the hair ends up, how you can make it thicker, longer, uh, and um, the fact that hairs have all the material, can, uh, hair materials have all the features that regular materials have. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just, um, it could have textures and it can be uh, all kinds of things. Uh, so, and that you can have several materials on an object that you can switch between so and uh, and that that goes by the positioning of the material slots so let's say with in this case go into particle mode and choose three then you get this skin material looking thing and before i end i'll show you the last and, and very important feature that I want to show you in this particular tutorial is how you can shape the individual hair strands. Uh, and that's under strand, this sub panel here, strand, and I'll choose blender units for it. And I'll say the tip is going to be 0 0.01 and that the root is going to be 0 0.1. Now that th these will be almost like triangular, so if I go back to the particle system here and choose 
my material as number one, and we render that. It's kind of hard to see when we have the children turned on, so we'll turn off the children. And choose one per face here, one per face that way, and then we render that. You can see that now these strands are like triangles, and you can also see that they are kind of turned towards you. And uh, if you turn this around, we can turn, you can see how these are turned, they're so to speak facing you. And if I rotate this cube around the z axis a little bit and render it again, you'll see that they're still turned with their flat face against you. So they're really not round. They're more like a two-dimensional representation. So that's important to kind of know. And I think that is quite enough for this tutorial. I hope that this uh, somewhat clarifies you know, the possibilities and the complexities of adding hair to your, your models. Uh, so I'll uh, just say uh, I thank you for viewing this. I hope you liked it, and if you liked it, please click the like button, and uh, you can favorite even on your own channel, and um, you can also um, subscribe. So thank you for viewing. I appreciate your patience, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.